I'm just getting to the hospital to have my MRI for my left elbow bicep whatever I don't know what the inside of the elbow is called <laughs> the back of the knee the back of the elbow I guess anyway I've never had an MRI above my ankle so I imagine they're gonna have to put my entire body into the machine which my mother tells me is terrifying and therefore I should take a lorazepam which they'll happily prescribe but uh, I think I'll be fine so that was a rather interesting experience <laughs> It started with me being concerned about my dental implants, which I needed extra reassurance that they weren't gonna rip through my face when the magnets powered up, but they said I'd be good. And then basically I went to sleep. I incorporated the sounds and vibrations into the moment. I just kind of went with them rather than fighting them or trying to uh, not hear them i just let them become my attentive i don't know awareness and and i drifted off to sleep um, i was surprised when they were pulling me out anyway <laughs> so no lorazepam needed just uh allowing the sounds to be what they are and not fighting them anyway it's like 90 degrees and super humid today so I'm going to head back to the studio, do some elliptical, do some writing, edit some video, and I'll see you in a bit. Getting to the studio pretty early today so I can get in a roller ski before the heat arrives. It's going to be 90 and super humid today. It's already super humid, but it's only 75 degrees right now. So with the humidity, you end up drenched uh, regardless of the temperature. So I'm trying to think, is it the heat I want to avoid or the sweat I want to avoid? If it's the sweat, I'm not going to avoid that. So it'll be interesting how the experience goes and notice that I'm framing it. I'm imagining it in advance and predicting what it's going to be like. It's not going to be like that at all. It's going to be just a ski. Whether I'm wet or dry, it's going to be a ski. I'm going to learn a lot. I'm going to practice technique. Uh, Jens Berman from Sweden. I'm working on his arm position. And I'll mostly be focused on that, not on how hot or sweaty I am. But right now, as I imagine the day in front of me, that's what is concerning me. But once I'm out there, I'll stop thinking about it and I'll just ski. All right. Here we go. It is a bright and soon to be very warm morning here in my educational bubble. I'm just finishing up a listening session to Cringe Worthy. And right now she's talking about self-compassion, but for whatever reason, she feels strange using that term. So she's calling it self-clarity, which I find interesting. She's cringing. This is a book about cringing. She's cringing when using the word self-compassion. There's something about it that's cringeworthy for her, but she doesn't see that. She's not acknowledging her own cringing in this particular chapter. So it's unfortunate that she's choosing this term self-clarity because it's really non-descriptive. And the people that she's calling self-clear or with a high degree of self-clarity aren't necessarily more clear on anything it's just that the self that they operate from or as is less challenged. But that doesn't mean that they have a clarity that insecure people, self-critical people lack. Anyway, upstairs to the studio, gonna try to get myself in roller ski gear pretty quickly before we hit 90 degrees and high humidity. I just experienced something interesting that I thought I would capture. I came home to get my roller skis, which I had left outside last night because I had to move something in the car. So I took the roller skis and poles out, put the item in, transported it to where it needed to go, and then forgot that I left my roller skis in the backyard. So I came home just now to get a ski in before it gets super, super hot. There's two poles and one roller ski. And I'm thinking, what the heck? Did someone steal one of my roller skis? Did an animal take one of my roller skis? Who on earth would do this? So 
I'm running through this imagined scenario of who or what might have possibly taken my roller ski and I was getting pissed and also feeling like, oh crap, well, there goes my day. I can't roller ski now. And then I started simulating or imagining uh, the day being for Shaisa. But then I remembered something. I put one of my roller skis back in the car, just one, to bring back to the studio so I could hot glue the binding because it's vibrating when I ski and on bumpy pavement, it makes an awful racket. And I didn't want to annoy the people in the houses that I was skiing by, especially in the morning, by this vibrating plasticky sound. So I took the roller ski, but I didn't remember it. So suddenly in this moment, I'm blaming my family or some idiot that snuck into the yard last night and decided to steal a single roller ski or some animal that wanted to gnaw on it. Who knows what? But that was the reality that I imagined. But the truth is that I did it. And I forgot that I did it. And I was about to blame somebody else. We have to be so, so careful with our simulations, with our certainty with the feelings that arise. And we have to say, hmm, I don't know where the ski is. Let me be very, very gentle with the fact that I don't know where the ski is. And let me simply take steps, but be careful of the simulations and the feelings that result. I'm just getting out of a meeting with the doctor to go over the results of my MRI on my left elbow. And other than the minor fractures in the bone of my ulna, everything looks fine. Uh, in the, the bicep, the tendons look good, the muscles look good, the nerves look good. So they don't know where the pain might be coming from. So she's telling me to start back slowly, do some eccentric loading. So maybe I'll jump up on the pull-up bar with some weight and lower myself down slowly uh, and gradually build things up that way and see what happens. Um, but uh, I can start loading it again. A little confusing because it still burns if I even use it to pick up a bag or I was weed whacking yesterday and it burned a bit doing that, which weed whacker's not heavy. So there is something going on, but they can't see it. Anyway, I don't know. Mm. It's way too early in the morning and I'm about to drive to Carlisle, Massachusetts to run a cross country race. Two and a half hour drive. <laughs> Ninety-six percent humidity right now, 70 degrees, but it feels like a sauna. It's hard to breathe. So uh, this will be interesting. And anyway, I just did a one and a half mile warm up. Feel pretty good. I had to drop out of my race today. I was feeling pretty good, but I had an episode of SVT or supraventricular tachycardia just before at the two mile mark. Um, I tried to ride it out for a little bit, but my heart rate got to 190 and I could just feel the gas coming out of me. Um, you can't breathe properly. You're not pumping blood or oxygen to your muscles because your heart cells are competing with each other and they just keep elevating your heart rate. Anyway, I stopped, hugged a tree, decided whether or not I was going to continue or drop out of the race decided to drop out of the race, stopped my watch, and then just hung out trying to calm my heart rate down. 
uh, for, I don't know, maybe three minutes. And then my teammate, Dave Dunham, came along and he said, whatever it takes, get to the finish line. We need you for team scoring. Even if you have to walk, get to the finish mm -hmm. line. So I waited there a little longer and then jogged it in. But even jogging, my heart rate was still around 170. Um, so yeah, there we go. But the first 1.8 miles felt really good. I was in the top five. Um, my two teammates, Steve Braidman and Greg Putnam, both in the mid 50s, we were all running together. We were the top three, 15 over. Uh, and I was feeling solid, but yeah, what am I gonna do? So maybe I will reschedule with the cardiologist or electrocardiologist in Albany. And there's Steve, and uh, we'll see if um, if we can get this fixed. I don't know. Having ablation done in my heart is kind of scary. They tell me the risk of a problem is small, but that risk does exist. And the heart issue really doesn't bother me other than racing. It happens, but you just, you get through it. I can turn it off pretty quickly, but if I'm gonna invest in driving to a race or lodging or race entry fees, and then I have to drop out, then um, it's just not a good idea to spend a lot of money on racing. That's really the issue, whether or not I get this fixed. But the, previous doctor did say that eventually it will kill me. Wow. So we'll see. Anyway, gonna drive home and uh, finish up the book, The Mindful Body by Ellen Langer. What you doing, kids? What you doing? Hmm? Chilling? Yeah, just chilling? What? What are you doing? You gonna jump? You gonna play? Oh, careful of the road. Careful of the road. No going across the road. Kids. The week is at an end, and even though I don't like telling stories about things, it just felt off. So rather than allowing that to migrate into the weeks to come, I want to take a look at why. Why did it feel off? Um, I know I had my Swede here for a month, and I'm kind of in the, the space of being alone again, and also uh, just lots of projects that I was putting off while she was here are now confronting me um, and the foundation project as well now that I can use my arm I've been given the, the doctors okay I've got to get back into that but I'm finding myself really resistant and hesitant so I'm wading through molasses a bit uh, it's showing up in my training as well I have been getting some somewhat decent polling in, but I really haven't been doing much else. So rest days, polling days. I did some pull-ups with a slow eccentric lowering. Uh, that felt okay. More polling, more polling. Uh, doing a medium set of dips, and then I had the race. So essentially just maintaining something. Uh, and this is a big component of my philosophy now. Don't worry about knocking out of the park. Don't worry about ever increasing. Just maintain. Maintain 80% all the time. Don't try to hit 100 ever. And maybe on occasion you go for 90 to 93%. But that's going to be hard to do and you're not going to sustain it. So let's just try to keep you at 80 so even if you're in the midst of an off week, keep yourself moving, keep yourself doing something, keep it gentle, don't burn out. So that's where I am right now. I'm in a, a maintenance phase. Uh, things will change and I will allow that. I'm not gonna 
talk about being in a rut or anything like that because that's a story. I'm just here and I'll experiment and see what's possible here and things will change. I don't know how they'll change, but they will. I'll see you in the next one.